I like to make myself believe that planet Earth is smelly. I haven't taken a shower in about five weeks today. Chapter one. Oh boy, what am I getting into? The train made its way along the gentle curve that comes to Japan, whisking me farther and farther from home. Across it, had a boy, face half burned in a newspaper. He was deeply entranced in whatever article he was reading and spoke in a single word. He was not to ask if I could join him. The last apartment with the new available seat. He had to say, uh, he draws the body, and I guess he did this without a few hours on him. It's been an hour and a half. He had one that looked at me. He was a jerk. The void of the conversation, I took out the, it said the town is the buttons on the pretentiously lost Carmine T. Cushion. One, two, three, twenty-one. Why do you? 400,000? And so, uh, 400,000 one. And so on, and so forth over and over. Because I have no life, and I will count uh, the buttons on the seat cushions. Now again, I the count again, I turn to look out the window. But the speeds were blurring by. Sometimes the meter turning would break and reveal quiet blue of the sea of Japan. Just in case you know we were in Japan, because it's the day of him, and we kept up pink freaking hair. Eventually, it's practically made by stone here, and I went back to counting on the buttons on the seat cushion. One million, one million one, one million two, one million three, one, two, Three. Oh, I just did what I was just doing. Holy God, joke dealer. The train compartment. I stuttered around us. My eyes wandered to the boy in the jacket. It wasn't the school issued blue than the eyes the other dudes on their feet were wearing. It's bad. It was a community of varsity like jacket. With an embroidered hat, poorly seen in the front. 
So you refuse to let her. He holds his newspaper neatly, set it on in his lap, and looked at me with a half interest gay gay. Did he have a tattoo scared me? While the paper was gone, I saw her face. He watched me through idiot blurred eyes. His hair was a magic blue glue. His teeth straight and blindingly bright. There was something about him. Only the light hit him. That made him almost look like he was sparkling. <laughs> Glanced around his apartment and see beside us and laughed. Oh! No, I'm not thirsty! I'm a stone deer! The train began to slow. Metal wheels, throwing hands, and metal old tracks. The sun shifts, threatened to rot me or whatever was left my stomach. As I closed my eyes, took a deep breath, holding the open health to keep it in together. Probably kind of impressed by me, puke now a student before I arrived in the academy. My boy frowned. I picked up at the hem of my cotton skirt. Mm -hmm. that, that's not possible. I never hear you before. It took me a moment of analysis to find her thoughts. Oh yeah! It's... It's not that a transfer student! Oh, please, please, please. We laughed again. A transfer student, huh? We don't get many of those. Also, I speak a bold text, cause I'm bold. I removed my accepted butter from the front pocket of my uniform. The paper, heavyweight, off-white, had accumulated creases from my reading and reread. As the word heard my saying since the last time I read it, read it. The boy took it, studied it, then handed it back to me. I'll see you around. Well then, Hana. I suppose I'll be seeing you around. He smiled and picked up the suitcase lying next to him. By the time I hit up another thought, he was already gone from the apartment. I stood up to the empty hallway of the train. It was then that I realized yeah, that he, I did not admit my breakfast letter, knew my name and I never got his. Tragedy. The train settled at the station and I filed out with the rest of the uniform students. Uh, it was early April, and the last frost of the winter had come and gone. Somehow I was able to transfer to a school in the middle of April. After all, I got suspended from Tsukuna student at my last school. The trees were already green, their leaves staring the occasional gust moving through them. The air was mild, only a few clouds came in the sky. I walked along the road to the thorn blue jacket body, looking out royal groups breaking from the crowd. Everyone was buzzing so amazingly behind me. I held my suitcase tight in my sweaty hands, so it was larger, broad, bound, and worth more than anything it contained. It wasn't as hard as cold and I was. Terrific. I actually haven't been paying attention to this dialogue in my life. I just been being it. It wasn't far to the school and I was to be her first time in my life. Thank God that what I owned didn't amount to much. What, what wasn't far in school? Oh, her suitcase, okay. Uh, okay. My school issued black author click, click, click on the pavement. I walked and walked over and over in my eyes. We oh, liked that we were like, rather than what we liked to walk on the street, the Austin Gal Academy the first time. After I was suspended for peeking on students, my new start. I always imagine everything would change for me on this walk. I'll tell you one thing, it doesn't change. Cause I know that from going from elementary school to middle school, nothing. If you're as awkward as me, nothing changes. It's just... It's actually because sometimes you become more awkward because you meet new people. That, somehow, everything would be magically different. I'm magically delicious! But, some, but as I looked around, I realized nothing had changed. 
I ain't changed. See? She knows. You don't change when you transfer from elementary school to middle school. Nah. That, if you was offered me, you don't change. At all. By the way, I actually don't know where a microphone on this computer is. Um. Oh yeah. I'll learn soon. But, if it seems like they're far away from the mic, then, yeah, that's why. By the time I reach the Master's Gate to the Academy, I almost forgot, uh, I forgot all about the disappointment brought in the back of my throat. The school, playing by the gate of Christian Black Metal, was just as usual as the glossy photos I saw in Hamlet. This was it. Off the Gal Academy. I glanced around. The swarm of students gathered around the gate, beyond it. Tiny blue avatar people bounced up around the academy's main building. A girl pressed the into one side of the The excitement in the air was almost out to the As the rest of the group shifted into motion, I swallowed along a sheep in the herd. Oh, there's my phone. My stomach tried itself into knots. Uh -huh. The crowd split off in a different direction for a moment. I panicked! A tired looking man with gray and hair called out the first year. A cluster of fresh faced students gathering around him. Hey, hey, look at that girl! I turned TV away. A small, small group of boys were pointed at me and snickering. Pink hair! Are you kidding me? You ha what kind of anime fan does that? How desperate can you get? Seriously, that must be that girl must be a big fan of Charlotte Frog because she actually dyed her hair pink. That's how you know she'll get a layer of hairstyle. Oh, touch and create crawls down my neck. I attach myself to a group of girls, all a few steps behind them. My distance. Cicadas hummed in time to my shoes, crunching her hips the gravel. My hair. It wasn't my fault that my hair looked like this. Sit, wait. Or, as a young child, my father decided that he didn't want me to be popular. So he sprayed pink spray hair spray all over my hair, and then made sure it never dried out. Cause there's no possible way she could have been born with this hair. Luckily, I found myself in the girls' dormitory, while I was along meeting Primrose House. The building forced me inside in sheer intimidation. How many foods did Oscar have? Four million? As many as the sea cushions did? As I approached the building, a red-handed girl, big green near eye, caught my attention. I looked away, then looked back. He was staring at me. Uncomfortably. She walked over. Oh, you must be my roommate! Great A voice asking. My eyes were wailing. She was smiling and bouncing in a way that just did her on life were akin to a perpetual bounty camp castle. If your views on life are really akin to a perpetual bounty castle, then you're high on something and you need to get checked out. What? Me? Bingo. A cookie, silly. They got room 325. I thought back to the paper and see the most prior to the list of all the supplies I need for the theater and dorm arrangement. Somehow I remembered my new room name number from a month before. <sighs> Oh yeah, that's right! <laughs> she laughed, but I couldn't figure out what was so funny. Was she laughing at me? Cause I found out my roommate was a transfer student, I knew it was gonna be a total main character. <laughs> I'm breathing up the fourth wall deal, okay? I'm sorry... A what? Mm-hmm. When I saw you outside the gate, I knew it was you. I mean, look at that hair! Who dyed their hair pink? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. See, 
You have to be a huge anime fan if you do that. Did you watch Naruto? I felt a lump warm me in my throat. What was she talking about? She had, uh, she had to be making fun of me. I didn't spend more than five minutes on campus and I was already being mocked. I know how you feel. That's how I felt in middle school. I'm done straight. Crap. My hands begin to tremble. Is, is there something wrong with my anime style hair that looks like a giant frog? Her face flashes lag from a confused smile to a more worried expression. And then she began to laugh again. <laughs> no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're getting on the wrong foot, aren't we? Oh, gosh. Um. Uh, I won't help. 50% of the game has always acted. 50% of it doesn't. I'm Mai Sasaki. You must be Hana. I found my head. Hello. It's nice to meet you, Rob. I need to go put her way in our room for your welcome letter and I read the envelope because I'm uh, because I'm a stalker. I hope I hope you're not mad that I'm a stalker. But I started blocking the towards the door's front door. I fall behind like a lost puppy. Are you getting at the front desk already? Oh boy! <coughs> Oh, I did it! Oh, gosh. Oh, I think it's Nick Fury. No, I did it! I didn't know I was supposed to! <laughs> okay, so I first, the staff members give you a tour of the campus, but I can show you around. You don't get many transfer fills like the Air 3, you know. <gasps> oh, is that really bad? Just like just the one. I'm glad I bought an extra bag for the stuff I could in a room with. I started already, I have to hold me up with that. But I didn't, but I just played the stream the light. Totally. I thought we could do it together, you know. <laughs> she spoke quickly, the words falling from her mouth. I, and left me no time to answer until the end of the monologue. Yeah, okay, that's so good. <laughs> she, she held the front. Girl up in her knees, ready to die. Girl filed down the hallway. A howling greeting and a shaking log of these that were more often than not how is your break. Oh, look how handy God. Seemed like everyone knew each other. I followed my he led me towards the main room to let me have two flights of stairs. Every door floor looked but the same. Narrow white doors climbing down the sides of paint. Hell pink walls. Green gold numbers were tackled on to the front of each. Did I just say tackled to the front of each? Then gold numbers were tacked to the front of each. The numbers rising as we climb. I cannot read it. You're not going to be anything with the cap and go on it. This just like telling us that every year is like totally dull. He just drags it around the entire town and uh, talks in that weird squeezy voice in it. Well, that, I mean, I don't want to talk so much about my voice, but whatever. I'll tell you everything we need to know, so you need to know. I smile, but I kind of want to calm my nerves. You know his voice was annoying. Hey! We headed down the uh, hallway on the first third floor. I saw the subscriber with already number three, two, five and a half. Here we here we are. I think well a pot pouring left through the room. My already defaced them with a tapestry of posters, magazines, cutouts, and photographs. Some of the photos were cats, but most of the most were male models and rugged musicians. A bunk bed. Two riding vests with wooden chairs, a small dresser, and weird rat violin. All clearly pride by school, where the only piece of furniture is in high room. Besides the string of lights that she already hung up without my prediction. That's all bunk 
were was always covered in a neat tux, neatly tucked blanket and throw pillows that classic patterns and colors. The bottom bunk had a single stiff looking pillow and a cotton thin cotton blanket I can't really say. That I didn't need to know what test to know was horribly itchy. I must have grimaced because it might quickly smile at me. Uh I bought way too many pillows and blankets. I always overpack and I'm really conceited. I went to Italy over break and mom got really valued because I bought like five at but we were only there for a week. <laughs> she laughed, pulled, pulled several blankets and pillows from her bunk and rearranged them neatly on mine. A sudden twitch of guilt and embarrassment hit me. Perfection! There! That's like much better. Perfection! Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Mom! <laughs> I placed my felt suitcase on the bottom of the hand to unpack the contact, towel cage of clothing, pens and pencils, a few notebooks, a few photographs of my father, blah 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 blah, yeah, I don't care what's in her pack. My open the cur curtain and the syrup on my curtain. So, where are you, like, where are you from? I put the analogy suitcase under the, the bottom bunk. <sighs> but I'm two hours north of here. It's a small town called Am Amor Dirty too. You guys probably haven't heard of it. They have a hair salon where they can permanently dye your hair pink. And then they get tied to the thingy that you never did it and it wasn't your fault. I start the stuffed rabbit, Mr. Bunny. On my bed beside a purple teal throw pillow because I'm a five year old with the body of, uh, of a 13 year old. Oh, hell, do you like go to different boarding school or. No, no I went to a public school down the street from my house. Really? Public school? God, what was that like? What a student's name? Did you have a lot of friends? I was at the private school, and my parents don't care about me, and my dad goes over to me, so they stop to hear because they're convenient. <laughs> oh, hey, what's that? I really... I should start... <coughs> I should start... Re <coughs> <coughs> oh. I really... I... Um, I think I should start reading these lines in <laughs> Hannah's voice. Because that, that would make more, more sense. <clears throat> I removed the ordinary pattern origami cream from the black rice and was setting it on the old clay rice. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a wondrous ride uh, through the train ride. My mother made it for me a long time ago. She died. I. 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 I wait, did I just do the wrong voice for my Gosh darn it. Okay. I said it! And he buys a stack of thick textbooks, which I assume were provided for me. Aww. Wow, he's so pretty. I've never seen paper like that before. Yeah. Oh yeah, the lads. Let me get them. Oh, I want you to rip them off the wall real quick. My one, my one to top box ripped the. Uh, and rip the light off the wall. I thought this would look nice. He always like, clean them back up now he's already ripped them off. Ah, <laughs> uh, he, he grabbed the container, pushed it. I thought I can't do this. And I pulled her one desk out uh, and over to one wall. I did the same with my own. Together we pinned the lights around the perimeter of the room. Ah. Uh, well, I guess, I mean, they weren't around the perimeter of the room before. Um, so I guess that's changed. How did the train ride over? Do you mean. I am terrible at remembering voices. If you're a new scratcher in the channel, you just know that. Like, I lost me the wrong voice for each character. I tried to make a note of what each, what voice each character has. How's the train ride over? Do you meet anyone? No! Not really! I was in a compartment with some guy! Totally hot! He's so dreamy! 
dead. What? Some guy, huh? What do you kill? Mm. I, you're not totally I I don't know. I I'm too I wasn't paying attention. I was counting the four million buttons on the freaking seat cushions so I had nothing else to do. Mm. My eyes seemed disappointed for a moment to prick back up. <laughs> you must have no life if you if you were counting that many seat cushions. Yep, point him out to me if you is the end again. Okay! While she been streaming the lights, Mai climbed down from her chair and brushed her hands together triumphantly. Yeah! Done! Okay, now it's time for the night. The food here is pretty good. It's like this ramen place down the street from a campus that's like out of this world. But the school only likes to leave campus on the weekend. I feel Mai walked up to her window. It could go today because it's Sunday and it's pretty nice out, but I guess they might want to go to the calf that you just got here. I'm sorry, what? You could go to the calf? I bet you every teenager, I mean, I know all, they always speak in text lane. Imagine if every teenager spoke like that. Yeah, we could go to Starbucks and hang out with our fries. Yeah. You care. <laughs> you were suddenly interrupted by her own enthusiastic laughter. Wow, she just laughed spontaneously. Oh my god, me and Santos totally just took that bat and fell on our face. I saw it! Oh, is that mean to laugh? Maybe I shouldn't have. Oh well. Anyway, let's go to- <laughs> Oh, anyway, let's go to eat and totally starve. You let me out of the room before I even had a chance to respond. The cafeteria was buzzing for students excited for the new year. The only people as nervous looking as I or as I felt were the table that finished wide eyed the first year. I know how that feel. Also I just realized this is in high school. Uh not middle school. And it's a private school. Which, yeah. I stepped into a line behind my taking an empty plastic tray. We shuffled through asking for helping from the salty cafeteria workers when we passed something that looked good. With full trays, my led me straight to, the, to a table in the back where a few students were already sitting. My sat down and I took a seat across from her. I uh, tried to go a list to do her. Uh, hi, bye. How was your break? It was good. We went to Italy and Spain. Dad drove off the keys. I see Dad just broke his ankle. <laughs> uh huh. It's better now, though. Sadly. Ow. Oh, wow, well, that's nice. I expected to be introduced, but the girl, girl turned back to her group of friends, and Mai turned back to me. He began to assault her fruit with- Oh, crap. Uh... She began to assault her fruit with a fork and can tell me, and her past life didn't like an account of her fleeting romance in the last time with a boy and came out on the beach and go harder than a six salty kitchen. Man, she's perking that food. I, I sat back and let my talk. For the first time since arriving on campus, I felt like I was finally able to breathe. That asthma. I picked up, I picked up my phone. I picked up my phone and studied my strokes. Uh, the more I talked, the more he ended up and I felt what he held about her. He had a high, somber voice. She was dynamic, her face twisting in a way that her exaggerated, her face twisting this way, then that, into a exaggerated expression as she spoke. She also, at the moment, she also seemed to be randomly yelling, What? into the room. <laughs> she laughed often, especially when people got hurt. <gasps> she imitated people in wildly unflattering voices, seemingly unrelated to her actual opinion of them. 
But no smoke, he talks. I didn't find this particularly annoying as it filled the silence and she already asked questions that required my full attention. Just as my sound got the shocking detailed account of the time she actually walked in on her friend's older brother Jack was taking, a flash of familiar green caught my eye. I glanced over it. <laughs> hey, that's you! Huh? Oh. I leaned across the table to whisper just in case he can hear me to add me to the washroom. The boy for the train! That's him! What? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. The three green jacket and the spooky head. He picked. He just picked up the train and was washing past us and something seemed to catch his eye. <laughs> oh, you? Oh, what's that? Okay, and suddenly realized he was talking to me. Hana! Hana! I feel in the train. Oh, I think it's only down for you. <laughs> really well? I found my roommate and she's been helping me out! I just heard some eyes with thunderstruck. Fast, looking around, everyone was. People thought he was turning to stare at me. My right? shoulder punched around my neck. Well, well, you ever need anything? I'll be around. 30 years, right? Uh, I, I know how this. Alright. You're my friend, or not? Of course. They can't compare to me, because I'm a thief, bro. I'll give them a heads up to look out for you. He flashed the album smiles at me. <laughs> it's really such a new position to girl. If I, you know, I'm pretty sure if I said it's really such a new position to girl, I just collapse across the face. Then again, this is high school, not middle school, but still. I, I, no, even in high school, I'd probably slap in the face. Uh, yeah. Well. I'll see you around. If I'll see you around, like it's been your death rays. Ah, I watched a corner of his thoughts fading through my head, illegally through my head, as he took a seat next to a bunch of guys who were all wearing the same jacket. Oops. He appeared for a flash of a second, then disappeared again. He tore away from him and looked at me. He's so cute! He's the most beautiful guy in the world! Oh, Jared. I can't believe he just looked at me. No, I appreciate you looking at Han, not you. This is disgusting. I looked at my. The teeth was going to be decent. I find not to correct him that she was there to look at me and not her. Why do they always wear these jackets? Are they guys supposed to wear blue babies as part of their uniform? No, they're allowed to care. You know, Karen! The girl turned her back around and was looking at me with sudden interest. <sighs> I, uh, Did I know him? I only talked to him. I'm on the train for a few minutes, so I'm not really a friend or anything. But looking around, my this girl was the only one uh, who were in this day. Everybody seemed to be listening to him. He seemed to be private and talk to me. Maybe a little white light can hurt. Um. Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, sure, I know. The girl looked at me up and down at a few seconds. He had burned her for her kiss. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself earlier, did I? I'm Mimi. Nice to meet you. So oh, I'm Mimi, Gary. I'll come off at my Mimi. I'll come off at Mimi. Gary is Gary's not interested. My Mimi stared at each for a few seconds, having some kind of silent mental battle. Were, were they actually friends? No, no, seriously, what? They seem to be 
and they at each other. Why are they even friends? They just get angry at each other. Then Mimi turned away and continued to eat. Hmm. Sorry. Sorry, it was clear that she's trying to get in with you for her own agenda, so I cut her off. She got in with me. Why? Well, you asked about the guys in their jackets, right? No, they're the normal boots called jackets. Um, they're... What? What the normal boots club? It's the norm- It's the normalest club on school. Crap. Uh... Oh yeah, it's, it's like totally exclusive and full of only the cool and student and the greenest ones. Yeah, you'll never be good in there. They got together and they get together and play a video game or something. I don't know. They're all nerds. That one on the right is John. Also known as John John. His friend's name is John. This is up. John is also the president of the drama club. Yeah, cool. Okay. I'm not doing... I'll tell you so what, how I do soon, but... Next, I'm going to make PDG. He and John founded the Normal Boots Club together. PDG is like one of the best soccer players on our team. And there she are. People call her Caprice to this. But yeah, he is definitely Caprice. I mean, he has the biggest ace of my little pony collection I've ever seen. Something wrong with him? Next to him is Jared! Also known as Bro Jared. <laughs> He's the greediest guy in school. Every time I look like 75, 75, he is looking in a mirror because he's so obsessed with himself. He doesn't care about anything else. Yeah, ah, this is so perfect. He is, he's so perfect. Yeah. That's it. And then there. And then there's Zach back. Hey, he's called Zach. He's like face smart. Yeah, I don't care about it. Those guys over here are Paul and Nick and Josh. They call, uh, right, call them in the school newspaper call. Continue. Yeah. Paul, the one standing up on the right, to Council President and I am the end of the game. You know more about the new game than yeah. anyone else ever. Mm. She excelled. She excelled a dream sign to her mashed potatoes. Now, mm. uh, so how would someone, you know, you know, like the normal this time? Yeah, you can't do the no. You don't choose the boots, Hannah. The boots choose you. What? What? What does that even. I don't even. What? You have to be presented with the boots and to be in the club and they're like super selective. What? What are the boots? But then he, he called me here on the boot statue. It's like the one we're on the patio. What is gold playing? If they're math, I guess, they do swear to miss the Asian ritual with this. Ah. Rich, 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 rich. <laughs> I hear they stole a room with candles. And we're in creepy roads there to miss the Asian. The fear two girl said, said she saw it once and they were like, he acting around the boot and it sounded like they were talking backwards. Okay, I'm gonna have to end off the episode here because I'm getting out of this game, but uh I'm still gonna go on for a little bit. But I don't leave her. And even if it's true, they don't care I don't care if they're cold because they're really hot. Uh, I don't know why, right? I'm like me? Yeah, tons of friends. I think they're the most popular kid in school. I mean, everybody told me to look up and so I bet they could do any girl in school, too. Uh, oh boy, for that matter. <laughs> they told me not to just this comment. <laughs> Hey, I'm gonna eat your cake. I just 
I shook my uh, head and pushed the glasses tray across the table to her. For the remainder of lunch, I listened to my talk to my dear mouthful of hat dissolved frosting. Back of the dorm, I sorted through the pile of textbooks that the school left for me. The radio was playing the poppy tune. It was that part to me the static. My effervently scrubbed the notebook and a notebook at her desk, hunched over with an a uh, right usually poor posture. Hey! Hey boy! Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. bar looked up. I suppose to have a textbook or a history three and I she shuffled through the papers on her desk before producing a thick textbook. A demeanor man, a powder, a powder ring, proud that me the cover. Yeah, this one. I don't have. I don't have that one. The school must have missed it. My shrug did look. I set the textbook back on her pile. They have a bunch of the library. You can check one out. Where's the library? I shut Riffle through her notebook and wrote something down. She tore up the, the page out, out and handed me a crudely drawn map. Oh. oh, okay, I'll be back in a little bit, I guess. It took me at least 20 minutes to find the library. By the time I realized I was holding the map upside down, the sun was setting. <laughs> she was holding a map. Let's take it out. That's pretty good. I think this has some new first characters I can relate to. Because I'm not that smart either. Um, and I'm also kind of socially awkward. Uh, the library was much larger than I expected. The walls lined from four to four. At floor to ceiling, floor to floor. At the floor to ceiling, with books of all sizes on rough, the wooden shelves. Intimidated, I head for a front desk. Recognizably, the new spread a gray jacket was behind the counter. In a normal mood, I briefly considered running away. Hey. Uh, can I help you? I don't know how what house I'm like. Too late. Uh, uh, yeah, the school forgot to give you one of my tech books. I can go if I can get it here. See, which one is it? It's 3309 textbook. He stepped from behind the counter and motioned for me to follow. We dodged it between the aisles in a comfortable silence. He seemed to be friendly enough. I could say something. What was his name again? James? Gerard? John? No, not John. Seth! Huh? Oh, uh, were you work here? Uh, of course he work here. <laughs> <laughs> he chuckled, dimpled a pure inside his teeth. Yeah, I'm a library assistant. My second year, I love it. I get to help people find books and speak to them. His eyes twinkled like a ship on Christmas. Your your books right down there here. He stopped in a row of six dusty books. With all this history, I pulled out the book with the powder the weak man I saw earlier. <laughs> Still frowned at me. Thanks. He's great. He raised his hand. It's not it's nothing. Do you need help with anything else? Um I wanted to make a new impression on the world of club, but I couldn't come up with anything. No? Um, well, there's one more thing. I'd like to see a song for you. The song from the bottom of my heart. Okay. Here you go. What's it down to the studio, man? Have a little concert, then you go rock your bar. I sit here alone and I wonder why. 